The Yankees sweep the Oakland A's. The Yankees' first sweep of the season. And this Oakland A team is really historically awful. The Athletics dropped to 8 and 30. And the Yankees are four games over 500, 21 and 17 now. And yet, as I record this, the Yanks are still last in the AL East, which is pretty crazy. They would be in first in the AL Central. So it's just with this new schedule where you face your division a little bit less, you're going to have situations where certain divisions, uh, it's very lopsided. And the AL East is very, very strong. So 21 and 17, which, look, is nothing crazy, but you, you, you'll you rarely, if ever, find that record as a last place divisional record but you know for the Yankees they took they took care of business and the home runs were out to play in this series the Yankees hit nine home runs four in the first game two in the second three in the third and that's good to see the Yankees you know they've kind of they've lacked pop and look Harrison Bader returning has been great look Aaron Judge is two games back now he came back for uh, the second game of the series. And, you know, he's, you know, trying to find a swing. He'll get there. But you can tell a little bit rusty. But I think he was still – I, I got to see what the stats look like. I think he was still fairly productive. But Bader really, since he came back in the middle of that Cleveland series, he's provided energy, productivity, and just a major, major impact for this team. So that's been great. And, you know, there, there was – Home runs in this series, a couple of homers for Glaber in this series. And what was it for Glaber? Did Glaber have Glaber had at least at least two or three homers in no no uh two. He had two. LeMayhew had two as well. Aaron Hicks hit his first homer of the season, and he then got hurt. So anytime Aaron Hicks is like he does something well, and look, you take it with a bit of a grain of salt against this Oakland team, but you know, then Hicks gets hurt in game two. It, looked like, uh, it sounded like it was a hip injury, but I think he's going to be okay. I think he will probably avoid the IL, so he was basically an emergency option today in the uh, third game of the series, but even Hicks gets in on the act, and Anthony Volpe, it's a grand slam in this final game today as well, his first grand slam in, in his young career. It took Derek Jeter a long time to hit his first grand slam. I think he might have been about eight, nine seasons in when he finally got his first. So Volpe, that was good to see. And, you know, he's had a little bit of bad luck, but, you know, the stats haven't been very good for him. And with guys returning, you know, Volpe's going to need to perform to stay in that leadoff spot. He just He's going to have to. So hopefully that can help. And, you know, the Yankee pitching – in this series was was not bad. Uh, you know, actually, it, it really wasn't bad at all. But, again, this Oakland team is really bad. The Yankees did what they had to. And this is the first sweep of the season, either for the Yanks or against the Yanks. So that helps, where the Yankees were kind of towing the line of 500. Now they're four above, and now they'll take on the Tampa Bay Rays in what will be a very interesting series, a four-game set. We'll talk about that after we dissect the Oakland series here. But that'll be, of course, coming off of that really close, uh, unfortunate ending to that Rays series at the Trop. Now they come to Yankee Stadium for a four-game set. Tampa Bay, as we speak, is finishing up a series at Baltimore. And that series right now, uh, they split the first two. So that's the rubber match of that series tonight. And then they'll go from Baltimore to the Bronx. But for this series, for the Yankees, like I said, Aaron Judge returns. The Yankees, that last bullpen spot has kind of been a mix where it went from Nick Ramirez, the first game, sent down. Greg Weiser, second game, sent down. Davey Garcia, third game, sent down. So we'll find out who takes that Davey Garcia spot. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, that's a bit of a mystery. Davey Garcia hadn't even pitched. I guess it had been a couple of years. Davey Garcia must have been up a little bit in 2021. I don't think Davey Garcia was up at all last year. Let me just confirm that real quick. I think that this was his first MLB action since the 2021 season. Let's see. Um, for Garcia, yeah, he wasn't up last year and really was up only briefly 
in 2021. And most of his action was in that uh, that weird COVID year in 2020, where he pitched, of course, a little bit in that postseason, that whole Jay Happ controversy. But that's a, a discussion for another day. But yeah, the Yankees, the, the bullpen has been really, really used a lot because the starters aren't going particularly deep. And let's segue into the first game of the series. Nestor Cortez on the mound goes five plus innings. Look, for Nestor, it, it's been a little bit of a struggle this year. Not terribly so. Again, you take away that Texas game, and he's been solid. Nowhere near as effective as he was last year, but no real cause for concern. But look, the bullpen came into some pretty key spots in this game. This game was definitely the closest of the, the third game wasn't really close at all. Well, even that one had kind of a tight moment in the fifth. But yeah, this one, it's Nestor Cortez versus former Yankee J.P. Sears. And Sears, I thought, pitched well, just the home run ball got him. He gave up three homers, and that was his undoing. Other than that, I thought he pitched really well. I, I still like what I see from Sears, although the numbers aren't I, – I think it's the home run ball is hurting him. He's given up 10 home runs this year, but some of the other stats are encouraging. I, I think that Sears could be a good pitcher in this league, but the Yankees do find a way against them. In this one – You know, again, remember that Judge was still not in the lineup. This was basically the same exact lineup as it had been for that last Tampa game. Only real difference. Yeah, I'm not even going to discuss. They're really, it was, I think it was basically the same in terms of the order. So this was a scoreless game through four innings. You know, Sears and Cortez were dealing for a while. Ramon Laureano gets hurt right away, and he's one of Oakland's better players. He gets hurt right away. He makes a great catch on Glaber Torres in the first inning. He, I don't think he robbed a home run, but he certainly robbed an extra base hit, and he kind of banged the back of his head, and we didn't see him for the rest of the series. He was taken out right there. I, I think it was a concussion situation, but, yeah, like I said, Cortez and Sears doing a really good job for the team's offense is completely shut down. And then in the bottom of the fifth, it's Harrison Bader that gets it going. It's a leadoff triple. So that was triples in back-to-back games for Bader. There's just energy. He is just, you know, look, that Bader for Jordan Montgomery trade, that was a significant trade. And a trade for, like, for both teams. Bader was a fan favorite in St. Louis. And Montgomery was certainly, you know, um, a stable piece in that rotation for the Yanks for quite some time. So it'll be interesting. Bader's going to be a free agent after the season and – Look, as of now, I would definitely want to bring him back. But, of course, we got a ways to go until then. Then kind of Falefa lines out. And then as Waldo Cabrera, as a righty, hits a home run, it's a 2 run homer for Cabrera, gives Yankees a 2 nothing lead. And so for Oswaldo, both of his homers this year have actually been as a right-handed hitter. So there's been struggles there. You, you can't deny that. But there's been some good moments lately. I think his roster spot is fairly secure right now. But... Who knows, right? Like when Josh Donaldson comes back, who again, these things tend to solve themselves out by injury or whatnot. But as Waldo needs to pick it up, and that was a big homer there to, to give the Yankees a 2 nothing lead. We go to the top of the sixth, and Nestor gets into trouble. And that's been a thing for him, where Nestor kind of third time around the order, you know, he, he's definitely run out of some gas. And, and he leaves with bases loaded no out, and Ron Marinaccio comes on. And he did a mostly good job. Ran into some bad luck where Tony Kemp as a pinch hitter gets an RBI infield single. Just a softly hit ground ball and they get no one out. But then he strikes out Langoliers. Then, then he does a bad job where he, it's a base load walk to Jace Peterson. The one thing Marinaccio needs to work on is the walks. He's a really good pitcher. Has really good stuff. But for Marinaccio, he just needs to, you know, he's a little bit wild at times. And, you know, but I, I still like him a lot. He's tough to hit. He doesn't give up many hits. He strikes out a lot of guys. And he gets out of this jam here, tied, where Nick Allen hits a double play. Uh, It's a grab ball to Volpe, and they get out of there 2-2. So all in all, not terrible. So bottom of the sixth, the Yanks take the lead for good. Glaber Torres, I didn't even mention this. Glaber, I think it was this, you know, maybe it was game two. Might have been, I, I think it was actually game two, where Glaber kind of defensively was kind of bothersome. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that, where Glaber, uh, you know, the, the double play exchange, where that was a problem in Tampa as well, where just a, a little bit, again, with Glaber, it's a little bit lackadaisical. That's just his style. It, it want, you know, some could call it smooth. It, it reminds you of Cano, but less to the extremes, where Cano was smooth and for sure lackadaisical. Glaber, 
you know, less on both fronts. Not quite as lazy, but just the way it goes. Uh, and it's not fair. I mean, look, it's not fair to me to use that word. But, you know, I, th- I think he needs to just be a little bit more locked in. But at the plate, Glaber, really, really good series. And that was good to see. Torres homers to give the Yanks a 3-2 lead. And then after a Rizzo single, and, and Rizzo, I thought, had a had a nice, you know, series as well. Didn't homer, but was getting on base quite a bit. Had some, you know, multi-hit games in there, too. DJ LeMahieu, it's a short homer. So for DJ, uh, you know, kind of under the radar, having a nice season. And, and if he could just stay healthy, that's the key with him. He needs to stay healthy. The last couple of seasons, he's really, you know, gotten hurt by, by season's end. And it's really fucked up his stats. And he just hasn't been available. So for LeMahieu, it's short homer. His fourth homer of the year gives the Yanks a 5-2 lead. And that would be all for J.P. Sears. He's taken out of the game. In the seventh, Marinaccio gives up a single to, uh, to Ruiz. He then steals second, and then Carlos Perez walks, and that's all for Marinaccio. So that's where, again, you know, he did a pretty nice job in the sixth, but in the seventh, he gets into trouble, and then Ian Hamilton comes on. And Ian Hamilton has been a godsend for this Yankee club, and the adversity that he's had to overcome, it's been a great story. He gets Rooker to uh, ground uh, into a force, then strikes out Ryan Noda as a pinch hitter, and then Blade strikes out as well. So good job by Hamilton getting out of that Marinaccio mess and keeping it at 5-2. And then in the seventh, off of the righty, Austin Pruitt, Aaron Hicks with one out hits his first homer of the season. It's as a lefty. It's, it's the type of homer we used to see from Aaron Hicks, and so he gets into one. His first homer of the season gives the Yanks a 7-2 lead. And then Nick Ramirez, the lefty, comes on and is actually able to finish it up. So Ramirez, who is a total depth piece in that pen, the last man in the pen, gives the Yanks two scoreless innings. That's a good job by him. And for his efforts, he is then sent down. Because he threw uh, you know, 35 pitches, he is then sent down to uh, Scranton. And the Yanks win the game, 7-2. We go to game two. Game two is a pitcher's matchup between, for the Yanks, Clark Schmidt, and for Oakland, it would be Rusinski, uh, Drew Rusinski, who is a total journeyman type of guy, doesn't have good stats at all, and the Yankees really took advantage of that, and they finally got to him in the third inning. For Clark Schmidt, this was one of his better outings in a while, and look, it's Oakland. Like, let's, let's be honest. It's Oakland, but still, got to give him credit. Pitched pretty well. Uh, you know, got, ran into some trouble early, but it was a mostly effective outing as he went six innings, gave up two runs, had seven strikeouts, so it was a good job for Clark. And for the Yankees, Aaron Judge returned. Oswald Peraza was officially placed on the IL. Kind of figured that might happen. And that was the roster spot there. Interesting that, that Jake, you know, Jake Bowers was the DH over Willie Calhoun. So against the Roddy, Willie Calhoun was not in there. So I guess it goes to show you Bowers is, I guess, ahead on the pecking order. Bowers definitely has more home run pop than Calhoun. But Calhoun, I think, is a, a more, you know, reliable hitter, uh, contact guy. Whereas Bowers is a little bit more all or nothing. But we know they like that. But, yeah, that was a little bit of a surprise. And, and the fact that Hicks started as well. I guess that had to be for defensive reasons where they just simply did not trust Bowers or Calhoun. And that kind of makes sense, certainly in left field. So I think that was kind of a defensive move. And that's what they did. Obviously, Hicks eventually gets hurt in this game and has to leave. But Schmidt does allow a run in the second. As again, this is where Glaber kind of messes up and kind of prolongs the inning. And that leads to Jace Peterson getting an RBI single to make it one nothing, And no more, no further damage there. Uh, in the, you know, Schmidt gets into str- some trouble in the third, but is able to get out of it. He strikes out Langoliers to end the inning. And then the Yankees' offense explodes in the third. With first and third one out, Aaron Judge reaches on a fielder's choice. And Trevino scores in the play. Hicks goes to second. And it, it was an error by, by Peterson. So Judge reaches... And then Anthony Rizzo gets an RBI single, makes it 2-1 Yanks. This is the play where Hicks probably got got hurt, where he was kind of stop and go back and forth, wasn't sure if it was going to drop or not, and I guess he might have 
Hurt a sip in the play. Again, sounds like he might be okay. But Glaber Torres then gets an RBI single, makes it 3-1 Yanks. Then a Harrison Bader RBI single, 4-1. And then a sack fly by Jake Bowers makes it 5-1. A really nice inning there for the Yankees. Isaiah Conifalefa comes in to replace Aaron Hicks in the fourth inning. Uh, Jordan Diaz. Yeah, th- this is a story here where Diaz hits the first of three homers. Yeah, three homers for Diaz in a losing effort for Oakland. He, he homers off of Schmidt to cut it to 5-2. Then in the bottom of the fifth, Glaber Torres hits a two-run homer. After an Anthony Rizzo single, Torres hits one out. It is a home run again for Glaber. Gives the Yanks a 7-2 lead. And Schmidt ends up going six innings. So a nice job by Clark Schmidt. And in that arms race between him and Johnny Brito, you got to say that Schmidt is ahead of Brito right now. So when Severino comes back, I think Brito is the likely, likely one to kind of lose that spot in the rotation. But there's still a little bit more time to go. In the seventh, Albert Abreu comes on and Diaz uh, greets him with another home run. Diaz's second homer of the night, cuts the lead to 7-3. Abreu, not the best outing, and so Wandy Peralta has to come on. Wandy gets into some trouble. And for Wandy, you know, he hasn't been quite sharp lately, but not, but, you know, he does get Jesus Aguilar to ground out. Aguilar was the tying run at that point. It was bases loaded in a four run game, but Wandy gets Aguilar. And then in the seventh, Jake Bowers. With showing some power, a two-run a two homer after a Bader infield single gives the Yanks a 9-3 lead. And this was a dead center field, you know, more opposite field shot. Impressive power for Bowers. Again, I don't think he'll last on the team if they're healthy, but for now he's getting some run against righties, and that makes it 9-3. Then in the eighth, Greg Weiser comes on, and Greg Weiser, I'm just not impressed by him. Uh, I'm sure we'll see. He was sent down after this. I'm sure we'll see him again, but I just – don't like what I see from him. Weissert gives up a two and homer to Diaz, an impressive feat. Three home runs in the night for Diaz. It becomes a 9-5 Yankee lead. Then you get a leadoff triple by Anthony Volpe. And then an Aaron Judge sack fly makes it 10-5. In the ninth, Greg Weissert uh, gives up a single, then a walk. He's taken out. Clay Holmes comes on, gets cup, and he strikes out the side. There was a walk in between there, but Holmes strikes out the side. An impressive showing for Holmes. And the Yankees win it 10-5. So again, the offense, really the story, all series long. And I kind of forgot that, obviously, the Diaz three-homer game, you know, the Yankee pitching, it was okay in this series. It wasn't great. But again, Yankees win that one. They clinch the series at that point. And so now we go to the final game of the series, which was, you know, the final score was extremely lopsided. It was between Johnny Brito and, And Kyle Muller, the lefty, the former Brave prospect. And Muller, you know, got into a lot of trouble early. And again, it was Harrison Bader who just continues to produce. And it was lucky. We'll we'll, we'll talk about how it got there. But in the first, you get a one-out walk by Judge, single Rizzo, walk LeMahieu, Sack fly for Gleyber Torres to give the Yankees one nothing lead. And then Bader hits one to right. And there was almost fan interference, but it was the right call. I believe the right fielder, was it Blade? The right fielder for Oakland was Blade. And he tried to rob it, but he was unsuccessful and a fan caught it. But it was close, you know, but ultimately I think that they got it right. And Bader, by the slimmest of margins, when you're going right, you're going right. Hits his third homer of the year. Gives the Yanks a 4 nothing lead early, but then Brito gives it some of it back. Back-to-back homers by Carlos Perez and Jace Peterson make it 4-2. And for Brito, it was a struggle. It could have been worse. And, you know, I just – he doesn't inspire much confidence. But really, to be fair to him, he shouldn't be in the spot. He's not ready for the majors. He really should be in the minors right now. And I think ultimately that's where he'll end back up. It was scoreless for a bit until the 5th. And in the fifth, first off, you get uh, Brito into some trouble. No to walk, Rooker's double, and Cordero comes on. And Cordero does a really nice job. He gets Blade to pop out. He does hit Jordan Diaz, but then Kemp pops out as well. So that was a, a close spot right there. That was where the game got its most interesting, but Cordero came on and does a nice job. And then the Yankees absolutely explode in the bottom of the fifth. You get Narby I single by Rizzo. Kyle Muller's out at that point. Rico Garcia comes on and gives up a two-run homer to DJ LeMayu. So that's his second homer of the series. Then a double by Torres. 
And then with two out, Higashioka walk, Cabrera walk, and it sets the stage for Anthony Volpe with the bases loaded, and he hits a grand slam. A really impressive home run. I think it almost went 420 feet. It's, of course, his first grand slam of his young career. Gives the Yanks an 11-2 lead, and that would be all for the Yankee offense. Run-wise, that was all they needed, of course. And uh, Jimmy Cordero pitches a scoreless sixth inning. And then Davey Garcia would finish it off from there. The Yankees made a lot of defensive changes. Bader came out of the game. Rizzo came out of the game. And Garcia does give a home run to Bladell, uh, to Blade, excuse me, uh, at a, in the seventh, makes it 11-3. But Davey Garcia finishes it out, and it actually goes down as a save. It's a three-inning save for Davey Garcia. And it was announced he was sent down after the game. Maybe we'll see him again, right? I mean, just with him being on the 40-man roster, it always gives him a chance. And we'll see who replaces him. I, I can't say right now. It's tough. You know, the, the options are limited. We'll see. Not a big deal either way, though. But nice job by Garcia. Uh, and the Yankees went 11-3. They complete the sweep. And so now Tampa Bay comes to town. And that will be definitely a very interesting series for me. I think a split is is realistic, right? Could you win three out of four? Yeah, you could also lose three out of four easily as well. So, of course, I'd be very happy if they could take the series after losing a tough one at the Trop. But I just think if you're looking at it realistically, I think a split is where this probably ends up. The pitching matchups, Drew Rasmussen versus Domingo Herman, which is a rematch of that Saturday game where the Yankees came back and won. So, you know, that could go either way. That won't be easy. But Herman, he's looked pretty good so far. If he can keep the, the ball in the park, he's all right. The second game sh- is the biggest advantage for the Yankees, and it's Garrett Cole probably versus Josh. Well, I shouldn't say probably because Fleming did struggle versus the Yankees last inning. It's Cole versus TBD. It's probably going to be some type of bullpen game. And for Cole, he'll be motivated to make up for what was a really bad performance last time. Game three, Shane McClanahan versus Nestor Cortez. You can't love that one. Now, Nestor, of course, is capable of pitching well, but McClanahan is definitely one of the best pitchers in baseball, and so that'll be tough. That's a battle of lefties. And then the last game will be Zach Eflin versus Clark Schmidt, and that's also advantage Tampa, but we'll see. So it'll be interesting. Again, I think... Of course you want to win the series. You're the team, you know, what? The Yankees are about eight, nine games behind Tampa as we speak. So you want to gain ground. But at the same time, I think it'll be a fun series. You know, the intensity was there in that series this past weekend. And now Tampa comes to town. And we'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to it, though. The Yankees, they get the sweep against Oakland. It was an offensive explosion. But... I don't know if that's a sign of things to come, obviously, as Tampa has, you know, really good pitching and Oakland certainly does not. If we're up to me, the Yankees would play the Oakland A's for the rest of the season. And I'm sure a lot of other teams are saying that as well. Again, the Yankees, they get their first sweep of the season. They sweep the Oakland A's before a four game set with the Tampa Bay Rays.